This episode of Strange Love brought to you by Treasure Licious. Good evening. This is Strange Love, and I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Welcome, babies. Good evening, and welcome to another episode of Strange Love Live After Hours. I'm your host, Cami Chaos, and as always, I'm joined by Dr. Normal. Hello, again. <laughs> again. Yes, we had a very, very brief, not after hours. And our special guest this week is Will Raddick. Good evening. Hi, Will. Hello. Again. Of the Erraticast. Yes. But you haven't done, so you recently did an Erraticast, but you had a break. Yes, uh, I've had several breaks like that in which I just, for some reason or another, did not do the show. So it was almost a pod fade. It was like a semi-pod fade, is what they call it, when you know, podcasters stop doing their show over mm. a slow period of time because they, for one reason or another, decide that they're not getting anywhere with it or they're not making any money or something like that. But for me, I just always wanted to just have fun with it. But yeah, we don't make any money on this show either. <laughs> So you started that podcast in uh, San Francisco, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I think I started in March uh, last year. Ooh, March. Something like that, yeah. Yeah, around the same time we started, I think. Well, there, Sort of. Well, we started in November, but then we didn't. Then we took a little break until March. Yeah. I was confused by that, because I saw your first episode was the holiday f- uh, song contest, but it was dated in March. So yeah. I was wondering about well, that. Well, that's kind of when I... It that's when he, I think right, that's when he know? got the Libsyn account. Yeah. Ah. Going from the Google free storage, right? We realized quickly that we would run out of free storage. Aha. Uh-huh. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know how that goes. So what do you talk about on the Eraticast? Oh, uh, pretty much whatever comes into my head at the moment. It's very, uh, much as you'd assume from the title, there's not much structure to it. Mm-hmm. So uh, Because it's difficult for me to even conform to any kind of structure or schedule or topic uh, for any number of minutes. I have uh, very bad ADD, so I look at something else, and I'm like, oh, shiny, I'll, I'll talk. <laughs> and then I'll uh, just completely go off on different subjects. Sometimes, some of the shows, uh, I'll have other people on, but usually it's just me by myself, just kind of meandering through different topics in my head, sort of like a stream of consciousness kind of thing. And then I kind of try to edit it together into something that sort of makes sense. There's a reason I don't do a show by myself, because my stream of consciousness <laughs> is more like a series of tiny puddles. That would be interesting. I, I kind of zen-like. <laughs> How long does it take you to edit this theoraticast together? I mean, you've got, like, music, and, you know, it's kind of got that um, This American Life kind of feel to it, right? Does it? Uh, Maybe. I mean, this American Life has a very polished feel, I thought. It just, really? Like, I thought you were, uh, it was pretty polished, actually. Oh, really? Yeah, Dr. Yeah, a big fan, yeah. a big fan of your sound quality. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I do, okay. Um, but it, it doesn't take too long to edit it. Um, maybe a couple hours. I'll sit there and just try to find, you know, songs that interest me. I do a lot of uh, looking around on, uh, like, CC Mixture or uh, Freesound, sites that support uh, Creative Commons or archive.org, mm-hmm. where um, you can find tons and tons of creative commons licensed content and then you know you have to worry you don't have to worry about the big bad thugs at the ria coming after you one day when they finally decide to start suing podcasters i'm a big fan of the creative commons Hmm. yeah we're we're working on that for our material (laughs) here we still haven't got there yet it's more like scrambling for old recordings of bands oh, that no. I have that I'm like, okay, I could probably use this. Right? I was just thinking of on my blog, and when I did the Ignite presentation, I was so dedicated to making sure that all the photos I used, it was okay for me to use. So much so that I actually just mostly used photos from people I know. So who took the cleavage photo? That Miss Burroughs took the cleavage uh, photo with my iPhone. It. With my iPhone at uh-huh. the uh, gelato parlor down the street. And then what about the cat? You have to I took that. Somebody? No, that okay. was mine. Oh, that that's my too? cat. Awesome. Yeah, that's my cat. Let's see. The baby, I took that picture. The picture of Miss Burroughs, Miss Burroughs took. Mm-hmm. Leah, yeah, she took that picture. I can't remember what else was on that slide. Cleavage, gelato, a Smile. baby. Yeah. That was, you know, she took that picture too. She, like me, is a master of the self portrait. So, with the iPhone, you have to kind of 
hold it and almost be afraid well, you're going to drop it. With the yeah. iPhone, that's the case. But I also yeah. use my camera with the with the timer on uh, it. Yeah. Ah. Uh, Trust me, she's the perfectionist at or, the self portrait. Or, and this is a great tip for everybody. The all of the photos that are currently in my blog header, I shot with my MacBook. Ah. <laughs> I set my MacBook on the toilet in the bathroom and climbed into my bathtub. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I use for most of my Twitter avatars. The bathtub? Uh, no, the Mac the MacBook. Book. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm not the only one who uses the bathtub. <laughs> is, is that your cat in the? Uh, that New that was that cat belongs to one of my housemates. Okay, her name is Princess Tina. She's a very nice cat. Yeah, your new av- Twitter avatar oh, has Princess a cat Tina. in it. Yeah, yeah. She was actually chasing the uh, mysterious, unidentified animal that somehow got into our house today. The one that's so. chewing wires. Yes, mm-hmm. it's chewing wires and spatulas and drawers and and. Um, yeah, it was pretty. It was pretty frightening, actually. It it jumped out of the uh, of this pile of uh, debris. <laughs> while we were all hanging out upstairs looking for it, Ew. and and one of my roommates like screamed like a little girl and backed up against the wall. And <laughs> was hurt it a his little knee. girl or was it a man? No, he was a man. Excellent. Uh, I love it when men scream like little girls. Yes, he, he was like, "Oh, where is it? Where is it?" Ah! <laughs> so it was it was pretty funny. It was yeah. just furry and fast, right? Just kind of like some weird. Thing. I got it on video too. I actually recorded Ooh. with um, iMovie. I was uh, mm. I've got this little tiny. It looks like this little tiny creature just coming out from behind the pile for like one second, and you can barely see it. And I was kind of running it back and forth really slowly to see if I could identify it, but it just looks like a little blur. Mm. I'm thinking this would be good audio for your next Erraticast, right? The hunt for the furry <laughs> Hunt animal, for the furry right? creature. It went into my room after that, so... Ew. Yeah. Oh! Yeah, so now it's How probably... How will you sleep tonight? Yeah, I don't know. Oh! It's scary. It's, it's probably nesting among my clothes or something, or in my bed. Ew. So that's the subject of a lot of your Erraticast, is your, your life with roommates. That's true. Um, <laughs> I'm not getting over the fuzzy creature <laughs> in his bedroom. That's not okay. Or yeah. that thing that hangs out in the stovepipe, either. That might oh, you were, you weren't talking about the roommates. Never mind. <laughs> yeah. <Cha-cha-cha. laughs> no, they don't. Yeah, they stay out of my room. That uh, because it's uh, so. Yeah, they are interesting people. My roommates. They're um, they've all got uh, very colorful lifestyles. If you want to put wow. it that way, they're I all musicians. They've got a band. Roommates. Doctor Normal. Did you ever have roommates? Huh? No. <laughs> yeah, I think really? your friend like slept on your couch. I for had a girlfriends. While <laughs> Oh. Yeah, you know what I mean. You know, but that counts, is. right? No, no. If I always say, if you can't sleep with your roommates, if you're having sex with them and sharing a bed with them on a nightly basis, yeah. then they're not a roommate. Aha. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. So there you go. So I've had then, lots of roommates. Then you just call them a live-in so, so yeah. significant other. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty much how that works. Yeah. And then you got to figure out how to extract yourself out of the roommate situation later, and that becomes complicated, it's, and you're changing the locks said, on your apartment door. It's not a roommate and, if you have sex with you them know, or if they share your bed. I speak from experience. One I time see. going down, slamming a six-pack, and changing the locks to the door <laughs> at the same time. It's awesome. And she's calling me see, from the police station. You know what? Whoa. Sometimes <sighs> roommates, Normal has had a sometimes roommates are better <clears throat> than having a girlfriend. I, that I like right this. there. That's true. I That's like this true. line of story. I, I think I think maybe you should continue with that. Though. Well, the way the show works, Will, is you as the guest <laughs> facilitate our conversation. You let right. us talk. Exactly. Like, for instance, I could, tell you, us. I could tell you about when I, I randomly moved into my best friend's apartment and we put my mattress in the corner of the living room. It was a one-bedroom apartment. It was a nice little apartment. I slept in the living room. You, that's what I did in San Francisco with yeah, my roommate. Because it worked out well because I had the living room to myself when she went to bed. Mm. It was desperately expensive down there. And we were paying for a one-bedroom apartment um, like $1,700 or something. Oh, yeah. like and uh, we were, yeah, I was pretty much, my room was supposed to be the living room. And then we had the French doors between the room and then a hallway. So... It worked out pretty well, though. I mean, it so wasn't that bad. Why did you re- relocate to Portland? Well, for one, the price. Okay. Mm, and yeah. Uh, yeah, I simply there's no way I could have afforded to stay in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I visited here several times because I had friends who were living here for a few years, and I always felt like at home here. I felt like this was a place I that totally I should be understand. in. So, 
I totally get that. I wanted to move up here yeah. because you know, I, I felt like it was just as good as San Francisco for different reasons. San Francisco stressed me out too. I lived downtown, and Ooh. I would just I would come up here and feel really relaxed for a couple of weeks, and I'd go back to SF, and I'd be there for a few months, and then start it would start to build up the anxiety would start to build up. Really, and I'd say, I need to get out of the city again. So. San Francisco, it's a very stressful place. Yeah, and here I feel like you can get that kind of you know city lifestyle mm-hmm. and the bands and the you know the shows and what have you all that stuff the tech scene everything Mm -hmm. and still not be too stressed out you know even i mean unless you live right downtown but even downtown portland is not as stressful as downtown portland is so insulated as opposed to almost any city in california Mm -hmm. so it's just kind of a life lifestyle choice of getting out of california pretty much well mostly it was the money too but (laughs) yeah yeah but i did like it up here just as much so so you're like you know, hanging out in the creative community and the tech community, right? Yeah, that's that's sort of weird for me because I just somehow end up getting into the tech stuff because I'm on these social networks, but mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm more into content. So for me... Yay for content. <laughs> content rocks. Yeah. But it's content now. It's yeah. like um, I know something we don't is. have on this show, actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, for example, at the first, uh, at the beer and blog that I went to, I've only been to one of them. Which one was it? It was the one where they were talking about um, taking the Twitter format and mm-hmm. kind of working out a way to do that micro-blogging thing uh, on an independent basis. Mm-hmm. And that, and a lot of the talk was completely over my head. You know, which is interesting because I learned some stuff, but when it comes to what I do, I I mostly look at the tech stuff and say, okay, this is an interesting thing. What can I do with it? What can I make with it? Rather than how do I improve it or build yeah. on it or make something I new? Like easily it. Am- apply that to my. When I went to a word word camp, I went to the the guest we had last week, Marshall. We had Marshall last week, right? Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, I went to his talk on RSS Did and I was we? really excited. God, it seems like months Sorry. ago. We were out of town for a week. Yeah. Um, we went, I went to Marshall's talk and it was in, in one of the larger rooms, but not a large enough room. And everyone was just crammed in there on the floor. And I was like curled up almost into the fetal position on the floor <laughs> trying to listen to Marshall's talk. My leg fell asleep. One of my butt cheeks fell asleep. I, it was it was painful. But I was really hoping to like glean some fantastic insight. And I did. Uh-huh. Like the first five minutes, I was totally following what was going on. And then it was just like everything went right over my head. And I was like taking notes. I was like, I'll figure this out later, taking notes. And then eventually I just stopped taking notes and just stared blankly <laughs> at the projector screen. Um, and then I went and read some of it later, but right. But you know, it was. I mean, it was all really good knowledge. Um, and we, I absorbed weeks later. Of it. Not even what a couple weeks later, you're installing WordPress and getting your blogs all set up. It's everything. not that I can't do the tech stuff. So, I mean, I'm, I'm tech savvy enough. It's just that sometimes it just goes. That's fine, but yeah. the point is, is when you're hanging out with people who know that stuff and you're socializing with them, you at learn your blog so much. or Twitter mm-hmm. or whatever. Yeah. All of a sudden, it's like, oh, yeah, hey, let me, sure, here, this is how you do it, you know? And you're like, that's what I like about okay, Twitter. you know, it, it's, that's how you learn, you know, just by doing it mm-hmm. anyway. Right, which is the best way you that know? I learn. I'm, I'm one of those learn-by-doing people. Yeah, I can't just exactly. sit there and have someone tell me a bunch of stuff and then expect me to do something. Exactly. So am I. Read exactly. it out of a book and then go, oh, I don't know. But then know. I also have a problem relaying it back. Like, when I learned all the WordPress stuff, uh, Verso came over and helped me, Chris at work helped me with some stuff, Aaron helped me with some stuff. And I I learned all this stuff. I absorbed all the information to set up one website. Mm. And then the next day I went in and did it all by myself for the second website. And it worked out, I think, even better. And then Dr. Normal asked me, how do you do that? And I said, I could do it, but Mm. I can't tell you. Well, yeah, Uh, well, whatever. Yeah. That doesn't make... (laughs) (laughs) But the point is you set up the WordPress sites and... Yeah. And I and have I, no idea what's going I on. I hear a rumor I'm going to be setting up another WordPress site. All right. Ah. So you're um, you're also over at Free Geek. That's right? true. All right. I uh, teach there on Fridays. Um, they basically, I don't know if you, um, if most people are familiar with Free Geek around here in the tech scene, probably, but um, basically it's just to reduce environmental Im- uh, impact on, of, of the electronic waste because you have all these computers and other electronic equipment that's Old going stuff. obsolete mm-hmm. right. very quickly. And so much of it's going into landfills. So they started this thing, I think, like eight years ago where they just kind of uh, accept donations and mm-hmm. instead of throwing it away, people can bring it down there. And 
and then pretty much the deal is we take it apart and uh well we first see if it works and if it works then we'll try to do something with it but if it doesn't we take it apart and uh totally uh, have a, a whole group of volunteers that will reassemble it into something that does work and then the parts that don't work do get recycled and everything gets recycled pretty much from there so it's uh and what i do is i teach in the build program there which is anybody can come in there and uh, they'll teach you how to identify the parts of the computer how to take one apart and kind of do a triage on it uh, and then decide whether you know the computer is going to stay or go or what's going to stay from the computer and then um, you kind of then they kind of go to the next phase and then assemble them into workable systems which they'll give away to volunteers or and and the volunteers if you work there for say 24 hours you can get a free computer Nice. And uh, and it's not a bad one either. I mean, it's not, you know, a uh, super gaming machine, but mm-hmm. it's uh, something like a 2.8, 2.6, 2.8 gigahertz, something like that. And uh, it's, it's a pretty nice uh, I'm, machine. I'm always amazed by how much more power you need to run a gaming machine. Oh, yeah. Which is a non-necessary function than you do to do anything. Oh yeah. You, yeah, you don't need that much really to, you can use a computer that's like six or seven years old or well, maybe like five years old to comfortably and browse the internet yeah. and do all your word processing and office stuff. And they, they run uh, all the machines with Ubuntu, which is, they load all the machines mm-hmm. with Ubuntu, which is like a lot more efficient than say we, Windows, right. so. we have yeah. one Ubuntu machine in our house. That's right. It's a, like a 1.5 gigahertz and mm-hmm. you know, it runs... It went too great. And you can use it pretty comfortably. Like, kind of oh, yeah. yeah. It actually goes really, yeah. it's very efficient. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was astonished by that when I first started uh, working there. And yeah, just the, well, and so these these systems also end up um, getting um, donated to, like, schools and education programs. Actually, stuff, they have right? a new program that they yeah. just uh, started where the city of Portland is giving them old computers from their offices. Mm-hmm. And they've specified specifically that uh, these computers are going to go to students or schools. Very nice. So we have a separate category for those, and uh, those are all coming from the city. Because the schools all have to receive Macs, isn't mm-hmm. that? Uh, I think. Well, these are PCs. Yeah, what? that might but be with, changing with Linux yeah. on them. We load them all. Mm-hmm. We we treat them all just like yeah. the other yeah. boxes. We load yeah. Linux on them, and then. I, I think a lot of the schools, or at least the schools we're familiar with with our daughter is they just get these old Macs donated, right? Running Mac mm-hmm. OS, but no, they, think, they actually have certain system um, mm-hmm. requirements. Now they have to purchase them and have certain system requirements because everything, those bubble tests that we used to take as kids, yeah. everybody, if the scantrons, yeah, the scantrons with the bubble, you learn how to fill in bubbles before you learn how to write. <laughs> um, they don't do those anymore. All, all of the uh, standardized testing is now oh, no computerized. Kidding. Yeah. Huh. When yeah. I was a kid, we only had them uh, Apple IIe. Oh, them. dang old, dang, dang old Apple We'll play that Apple logo. Oh, program, that's right. That's program right. that turtle, make it go around. <laughs> it's too easy, man. Moving around. Yeah. Oh, no. I that was like that. the first, uh-oh. I miss, I miss the sound of those disk drives. You put the disk in and it goes, donk, donk, yeah. So the first system you were on was 2E? When well, you were a kid? Well, that's yeah. what they had in our school. Yeah. The first Oh, yeah, because the school had, had like five-year-old technology. My school didn't even have computers in it. I had a Commodore 64 when I was like five. Oh, yeah. yeah. That was fun. But I didn't know how to do anything on it. I would just like push the buttons and watch the pretty colors and the characters it was up like on the screen. A modem so. and BBSs. Okay. Yeah, I didn't do any of that. No, no, no BBSs. Like, We've got some serious business that we have to get to. We do. We need to talk about what we're drinking. Ah. This evening, guests of Strange Love Live are enjoying Cammy's first ever batch of hot buttered rum. For the delicious. holidays. For the holidays. And a beer. What kind of beer are you drinking? Uh, this would be a Sierra Nevada Celebration Ale. With poinsettias on it. I believe brewed in Chico, California. Yes. Woohoo, Chico! Here we go. <laughs> Chico State Party Town. <laughs> yeah, My I sister went there. Stay there. Yeah. Isn't that a college town, right? Yeah. Yeah, when I was uh, in, in fifth grade, we went to environmental camp. My camp counselor, Cheryl, was going to Chico State. Oh. There you go. Hi, Cheryl, wherever you are. I've pretty much only driven through Chico on the way here mm-hmm. from SF, so I don't know that much about it. I've never it. been to Chico. I just know that my sister lived there for a while. She went to school there. But then she dropped out and went to um, cosmetology school down in Santa Monica. So How many That's siblings? That's my sister's. Uh, uh, I have two sisters. Yeah. Yeah. One of them is much younger. She's like 14 or 15 now. So wow. It's kind of weird. It's kind of scary. I was 14 when she was born. 
So now I'm, she's about to be an adult in a few years. Yeah. And it, it really kind of shocks me. I have that problem with my little baby cousins. I, I was their nanny. I used to change their diapers. And now one of them works for a large multinational conglomerate. Uh-huh. And the other one's almost done with college. They grow up so fast. Ten kids these oh. days. Oh, oh, Lord. Yeah, it was like my greatest nightmare and, and moment of pride when one of them was driving back up from California with her boyfriend and she called. She was like, hey, can we come stay at your house? You know, oh, stop in the overnight. holidays. With she stopped in friends. and we made yes. them spaghetti and I let uh, my cousin drink wine. She no, was there for 21. the holidays. She slept in my house with her boyfriend. So speaking of the holidays, <laughs> what about this wait, Yule, wait, wait. Yule Before tree? we get to the tree. Yeah, because oh. we don't want to hear about your cousin. No, I think we want to hear last year's <laughs> no. winners. Well, or at least sisters, one of them. So. Okay. One of the winners. So should we hear the naughty or the nice song first? I don't know, that's a good question. What, so, Will, do you think the nice song is... Yeah. I think we should save the best for last. So let's do the nice first. Let's start really? with nice. Yeah, mm. let's start with the nice song. Okay. This is the winner of the nice category 2007 okay. Chaos yeah, Holiday me, Song Contest. Let me cue it up. So just stop. And I don't mean to say that the the the. Oh no, it's a really good song. Naughty but song is necessarily better, but it's for just me, a, it's I, naughty. I prefer the naughty. You want to hear about the, the naughty song is way better and, than and this. And the Santa and yeah, the knees and the dirt and the yeah. It's a good song. It's, it's All right, so we're gonna good sit song. here and suffer good through song. the nice song. We're not gonna right? suffer. I'm an, I like Joe's okay. song, and I'm gonna go upstairs no, and make it, another hot butter. It was a nice drum. song. So we're gonna listen to the nice song, and then we're gonna come back uh-huh. and talk about free. Oh, we're gonna decorate the tree, right? We're gonna we're gonna trim the tree. Oh, that's right. We've this, got our holiday guest. This tree is gonna be trimmed. This little yeah. tree, we're gonna you're gonna help us decorate it. Oh, that's awesome. That's I didn't right. Know we we're gonna have activity that's right. time. This is oh, this yes. is our Yule tide tree. I don't know what the hell they call it. It's a Christmas tree. It's not, but you got to be like kind of all encompassing. Oh, it's a holiday tree. It's a holiday tree. <laughs> Strange Love Live yes. holiday tree. So we're gonna decorate it. Hey, um, my my ornaments are non-denominational. It's an Xmas tree. There we go. Oh boy, here it comes. The family version. Enjoy. Don't be a dick. <laughs>
lovely. And now I'm stuck here with dead air. So I'm going to find another lovely bit of Christmas music. Um, this, oh, I think I hear reindeer um, running around, or maybe not. Um, yeah, okay, this is dead air, so let's find another bit of music. This is called uh, Christmas is Santa's Time. And this will kill another th- good three minutes. This is a tune from 1987 uh, from yours truly. And it's funny. Come here, Santa. Come here, Santa. We got a show. We got yeah. a song for you. Come here. Die. 
That was Christmas is Santa's Time by Dr. Normal. Hey, Dr. Normal, why don't you tell us a little bit yes. about that song? Well, um, back in the day, um, we actually, uh, a guy I would record with, uh, we had a little project studio, and this was uh, back in 85, and this guy was like really into Christmas, so every year he'd be like, we have to record a Christmas song. So I'd be like, okay. Which so, guy? Uh, his name was Dave. But he so. did it around Christmas, right? He wasn't just like, oh, it's, you know, June. Can I, ask, June, can I say the Christmas last yeah, it was, name it was, of the person? It was pretty much last minute. You is know? it, it the Dave I Christmas. think it is? Uh, no. I don't know. We can, we can talk talk about that later. Okay. But anyway. Um, no, man. And, and so, I'm Dave. Yeah. <clears throat> Sorry. And so we would, uh, we would essentially get like a couple six packs <laughs> And get in the studio and uh, record a Christmas tune. So, so can I point out a technical error in the song? Yeah. <laughs> you do know that wearing a dress does not make you queer. Yeah, I know. Uh, a little problem, political correctness problem with the lyrics that were written in 1985. I've had sex with men that wear dresses. I don't think it's necessarily a political <laughs> correctness uh, thing. It's, it's more of just a, you know, just a understanding the lifestyle kind mm-hmm. of question. Exactly. Well, you know, it was 1985, mm. and, you know... We're all... Wait a minute. As a matter of fact, I have a photo of you in a dress. What? Mm-hmm. Oh. More than one. Oh, great. Ooh. There goes the chat room. <laughs> <laughs> well. All right. Yeah. Was, so, that, was that a Halloween thing, or was that No. Just, you know, I have no ah. clue what you're talking about. <laughs> I, I, oh, maybe I, I could share, if you'd like. I could find the photo. Oh, there's a picture of me on Flickr dressed up as a uh, little Bo Peep. Nice. Yeah. Did you have the ruffly, ruffly... Yeah, I had some Underpants? kind of weird blue dress. It was it was for uh, a friend of mine when I went to art school, and she wanted to do. Uh, and she and she, and, she, and uh, there's another friend of hers dressed up like a sheep right next to me. So nice. That's on my Flickr. So yeah. good time. And there's, there's one of me in a latex dress on there too. There's a lot of um, latex dresses are not comfortable. I thought it was kind of neat. It's kind of like weird. It's kind of like it's cold neat, and hot at the same but not time. Not comfortable. Yeah, that's yeah. true. So actually, it's, an, it's a it is an interesting sensation. I wouldn't okay. want to wear one for any sustained period of time. I have. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I was gonna say there are that's a lot that. of pictures on the internet. You have got a lot of like um, kind of art photos with friends and sort of things that you guys have done some photography projects and stuff like that there's certainly a bunch of stuff like that spread all over the place yeah facebook and Flickr yeah, and dv yeah. and art and um i actually don't have a lot of recent stuff out of mine but i do have so some what was stuff was that just stuff you guys were working on or some projects you were doing it depends and, it all varies uh, if yeah. you look uh, the funny thing is i like to tell people about my facebook is like, i don't go on facebook that often and but you've um, got a lot of art pictures and stuff on facebook mm-hmm. yeah, yeah and uh very there, cool. there are a lot of if you look at the pictures of me on Facebook because of the, the tagging system and everything like that, most of the pictures up there are from when I was going to art school. And if you look at that, you'll pretty much just assume that I was some kind of like crazy party animal because <laughs> the only time that anybody ever took any pictures was when we were at parties. Mm-hmm. So and then they would tag you the next day and put them up. So all my art school friends would put up these pictures. So if you look at my Facebook, it's just like one picture after another of me like yeah, you know, just like with a beer in my hand, like three people just like yeah. But you yeah. you also have other staged shots and other oh, things yeah. on Facebook like, there, as well. There's, there's, there's some really that, cool stuff uh, up there. Oh, you thanks. can say it's yeah. artsy is yeah. what you're no, searching I mean, for. Well, I showed you, you. You looked at the pictures on Facebook. I'd when seen like, them before. That's cool. Yes. Yeah, Anytime someone on, becomes my friend on Facebook, you should yeah. know that I go through and I look at all of your photographs. Oh, absolutely. Well, yeah, Who doesn't? Because you've got to know when it's like, it's like a Facebook troll is what it is. Did you see my mohawk then? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I used to have this huge black mohawk. It was awesome. I used to have a mohawk. Yeah. Sweet. Freaking mohawk. So what else are we you. doing? I mean, as far as... Um, so, I mean, it's kind of like the anniversary of our podcast. It's almost, we could say, the anniversary sort of... Well, March. Okay, we'll, we'll no. stretch it, right? You know, we can have him back on it's for the my anni- birthday, and yeah, then we can say it's the anniversary That's right. Is your birthday podcast. in March? Yeah, yeah. Oh, awesome. March is a very good month. See, it's my birthday's in this month, so we're well, next month. There we go. Yeah. In oh. December? December 30th. Yeah. December 30th. Oh, sweet. You, sweet. two days before Dr. Normal. That's oh, right. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's, that's right. right. We were talking about that, weren't we? Yeah. Awesome. Lots of good birthdays in December too. All right, but I think now <laughs> it's we're terrible. Gonna, right, we're the gonna holidays. Move on. You're like, well, like Chris this O'Rourke, is New Year's Day. Fuck you. Yeah, his Happy New Year's birthday Day. later. Chris man. O'Rourke's birthday is on Christmas. I got you a Christmas yeah. present. So That's now I think rough. we're gonna decorate the tree. I think it's time. Okay. I think. Whoa. 
And there's wow. some audio. That was some loud re- um, ornaments. I really need to get get control of my condenser mic. So here. we were trying to figure out. Actually, on our way home today, we had to stop in Newport at the at the grocery store to buy a uh, uh, a, a, a uh, what do you call it? Oh, well, yeah, to buy my Santa dress. There's your Santa dress. Uh, but also to get a oh look at that. There we have go. You brought, have you brought ornamentation awesome. for our tree? Yes. Fantastic. Okay, you put up the fluffy, fluffy red stuff, and then I'll put up the blue balls. Okay. Will they Will they be compatible? I think they will. Fluffy red goodness and blue balls. How can you go wrong? <laughs> All right. That seems to work. Yeah. It's good stuff. So we stopped, and I saw the blue balls, and I thought, what does every Strange Love Live Christmas tree need? They need blue balls. They need blue <clears> balls. <throat> and then Dr. Normal said, no, we have other. This, on the tree. this thing looks sort of Dr. Seuss like. It it's does. Very, it's gonna, I is, think it's going to look more Dr. Dr. Seuss like Christmas. I'm liking it. Wait till you guys see what we have oh. for the tree topper. That's right. I'm just going to tuck that in back there. Those Beautiful. Are excellent. Oh, it's so very fancy. Nice. And now, oh, this is going to be an audio treat for all of you. I, I sh- actually should. Oh, you, know, you know what? I'll get this out of your way. Thank you. Well, tree topper music. It's not. <laughs> tree topping music. I, it's just really just... You know, it's really hard to do this from the seated position. Ooh. I'm going to pass that back there to you, Will. Okay. Especially uh, with the mics. <laughs> sorry about that, everybody. There you are. This is the first ever uh, Strange, Love <laughs> <laughs> Strange Love Live Christmas tree decoration. Yeah, that's a, it's good that you have the music on there for the audio-only listeners. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's beautiful. It's got fluffy red marabou. I, and I can do this... Um, and uh, some lovely Currently, blues. Will Raddick <laughs> and Kemi Chaos are decorating the Yule tree. All right. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. And now, oh. Dr. Normal? Yeah. Now, this this is important. Will, I I, I felt really uh, strongly about this. Mm-hmm. These are little glow-in-the-dark cherubim. I, th- oh. I think that's how you call them. Cherubs. Yeah. Cherubs. That would be the, the, Cher- cherub- the cherubim. That would yeah, be the cherubim. plural cherubim. of cherub. Yeah. And to me, these represent... Um, what I would call the um, essentially so what happens, you know, I had this down so well. It I was had this funny rehearsed. in the car. It was funny in the car. So these glow and dark cherubim actually represent when men pleasure themselves and all those in, lost in way, souls trying, go to heaven. Unless they're trying to make a baby. That's exactly what they represent. Unless they're trying to wow. make a baby. That's right. Um, these are all the lost souls. So of if you could please put these on the tree and then you know, <sighs> take one home. Non procreation, so I guess. Can remember. Okay, maybe I'll put it on our tree if we ever get a tree. I think we're gonna have just I don't know what we're gonna have. At and my they do house. glow in the dark, by the way. They do. It's true. We've tested. How many? How many of these do we need on the tree? I don't know. I think we got three hundred. They're very cute. <laughs> we wanted to put them around the neighborhood once. Hey. Just for our daughter would not let us. Yeah, she wanted with to people. keep them. I could understand that give you a few more there i'll decorate this side of the tree and then yes. we'll get to the very these special awesome. tree topper. where did you get these dr normal where did you get these uh at the dollar store i don't know sweet Some he had them when i met five him. and dime i actually uh, i considered oh. leaving him when i saw them i'm guessing yeah. they're an ex-girlfriend really yeah. yeah i was like why do you have creepy little glow-in-the-dark angels so Refer- you're, you're reference saying... story about the six pack and changing the locks <laughs> on the apartment <laughs> Glow in the yeah. dark cherubs almost ended your relationship. Well, I was yeah. like, what kind of creepy, almost 40 year old man has little glow in the dark baby Again, angels? Again, this is for years of, you know. This tiny piece of plastic almost ended the possibility of this entire household. <laughs> You've been sad. The chaos household. All right, man. Sad, sad, sad. Okay, let's get a couple little angels on the tree. So maybe while we're decorating the tree, we should listen to the naughty, <gasps> last year's fantastic naughty. Idea. Last um, year's winner in the naughty category for the 2007 What do you think, Will? Chaos should we, should we listen to the naughty? Well, that, that's all we have left, right? Yeah. Well, we've, <laughs> there's so much more, really. <laughs> we do have a lot of Christmas music. Um, oh, really? It was Deb on the Rocks with a little ditty called Santa's Punish Me Polka. Lift 
lifting up my skirt. My knees are on the dirt. My bottom is so white, 'cause I'm a tease. I'm a tease. Punish me, oh Santa sweet, 'cause I'm a naughty girl. Punish me, black belt's my treat. Send me round the world. Belt so polished black. Please give me one more smack. My ass is glowing red. To lead the way. Sir, I'd like some more. My stinging bottoms sore. It's bright enough. To guide your sleigh today. Punish me, oh Santa sweet, 'cause I'm a naughty girl. Punish me, black belt's my treat. Please send me round the world. Santa says. Not me. No, not her. No. Sir, I'd like some more. My stinging bottom's so sore. It's bright enough to guide your sleigh tonight. Punish me, oh Santa sweet, 'cause I'm a naughty girl. Punish me. Black belt's my treat. Please send me round the world. Punish me, oh Santa sweet, 'cause I'm a nasty girl. Punish me, black belt's my treat. Please send me round the world. Okay, that was the last year's winner of the naughty category, Deb on the Rocks. That's right. And if anyone's wondering, those elves in the background are my dad and I. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Okay, so we're gonna finish off the tree. This is our beautiful. And if you can't see it, I'm sad. It's very crazy and Christian and Susian Christian? all at once. Well, the little angels. Oh, don't they have angels in other um, religions too? Something? I'm sure they do. Or yeah, some you equivalents. think so? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, okay, like, so it's got it's got naked glow in the dark baby angels. Red marabou and blue balls and blue balls. The beautiful, beautiful. Oh God! Some here people it comes. like to put stars. He's got to get music apparently. Oh, what is this? Oh yeah, it's the doctor. <laughs> um, some people like to put stars. Are you a fan? Will? I do not recognize it. Doctor Who? Do you oh, watch Doctor, Doctor Who? Who? No, yes. I do not watch Doctor Who. But I've heard um, you guys talk about Doctor yeah. Who. So some oh, people God. like to put stars on top of their tree. Some people like to put angels on top of their tree. I've been meaning to get tree. around to it. I'm going to put. Doctor Who, David Tennant, Doctor Who, as my tree topper in honor of the fact that here it comes. David Tennant is leaving Doctor Who. Oh, how can he leave? Isn't he the Doctor? Well, yeah, you're not familiar with Doctor Who, are you? No. Okay, I promise you guys this is gonna be short. I just have to school him a little bit on the Doctor Who ness. He's not human. He's an alien. He's、uh. a time lord. They regenerate, but when they regenerate after they've been killed, <laughs> they regenerate into a new body, and so they keep changing doctors. There have been thirteen doctors. I don't have the number right. Which see doesn't sound all that weird to me because I've you know been、yeah. into sci-fi exactly. For a while, when you know but... sci-fi, you know. So and this, ladies and gentlemen, has been your holiday Doctor Who moment. I just have to say one thing. Verso, baby, I miss you. I'm sorry that you weren't here to put David Tennant on top of the tree, but I was thinking of you the whole time. All right, I'm done with Doctor Who. Hi, Marissa. Yeah, we miss you, baby. Have fun、mm. in Disneyland in Vegas. Is she at Disneyland? She's in Vegas now. She's going to Disneyland. So, um, so wait. So you guys went on a vacation for your Thanksgiving. Yes. I mean, like, how was that? You, you haven't.、Uh, can you talk about that on the well, show?、Or? I like this guest. I do too. I like it when people ask about us. <laughs> exactly. It's nice. You're working out well. Well. <laughs> we'll have you on again. We'll、It's、have to bring you、times. back. It was、Sweet. a good vacation. Um. My parents、uh, still live in the Midwest, and so ordinarily we we kind of do the fifty fifty. 
Some years we spend Thanksgiving with his family. Some years mm-hmm. we spend Thanksgiving with my family. And this year we did not spend it with his family. And my brother... Yeah, cut to the chase. Let's talk about last night. My brother was happily working. So so we went to the coast for three nights. All right. Newport, Oregon. Great Woo. place to go. I saw the video with the with the piano music, oh, which God. I thought was a little bit over the top. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah, that's his go-to music that he puts to stuff that's sappy and emotional. But it did... Uh, Newport struck me as uh, being very similar to Monterey down in California. See, like, that's, that's what, what I was we saying. Discussing. That's yeah. exactly what I was uh, saying. It's segmented. It has. It's. It's not segmented as I. Uh, rather, they have the the fishing industry right in the middle of the main drag downtown. Yeah. Mm-hmm. it's really nice, and they also have the wax work where. Um, the wax works. Wax works. I wanted where to they had a wax touch Johnny, Johnny Depp. Depp. Really? He was just like sitting well, they, there in a room. So they just had like, him on a stool life-like. in the middle of the room. Like you're sitting right here. Right? What sort of Johnny Depp? Like was he? It was just like Johnny, Johnny Depp. Like star. in a suit jacket with a little hat on, okay. like normal. You so know, like, not this? like a pirate's Johnny no. Depp or like no, no, a crybaby no. Johnny Depp. No, no. Or like just like Johnny, Johnny Depp. Him, like sitting in the Viper room with a hat yeah. on and, and with so his tattoo. You walk into the room and like there's no ropes around him. There's nothing. You can just walk up and be like, there's a camera. Well, no, but there's a camera pointed right at you and you can see the monitor of yourself. So we're standing there going, are we allowed to touch him? I don't know. Can we touch him? Do you think? I'm like, I'm not comfortable touching we him. Touched him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We should have touched him. Did they have Leonardo DiCaprio? No. no. <laughs> they that just had Johnny That Depp. was like the main attraction. And it was good because last night I made Doctor watch uh, Pirates of the Caribbean yeah. 3. Yeah. Which, the first half of it is very good. Yeah, you know. The second half of it is bullcocky. Now you see, I've seen that movie, but I saw it at uh, Bad Movie Night. Yeah. Down at this theater that I used to go to in SF. It's a really uh-huh. cool place. It's called The Dark Room. Mm-hmm. And uh, they have this thing. I don't know if they still... They probably still have it. Every Sunday night where they would uh, play a bad movie or, you know, I guess it's subject to opinion, but... It's okay. It's a bad movie. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, pretty much they would have, like, uh, Mystery Science Theater style. They oh, yeah. Three or four people with mics up front who... Mm-hmm. who <gasps> Like okay. make fun of it and every it was Sunday a night. Lot of fun. I need to make note of this. If we ever go to San Francisco, we need to go on a Sunday so oh, that yeah. I definitely. can go. You should I just, definitely. I go. just I just figured out the plan for Strange Love Live 2009. They're they're nice people. They go. actually let me uh, sleep in their green room for a month when I had wow. trouble finding an apartment. That's wow. very nice. Yeah, but I was I was working for them. So Were you doing like audio for them and stuff? Yeah, yeah. yeah I did. Cool. I worked on one of their, they did a uh, play version of the Ten Commandments. Mm-hmm. Oh, nice! <laughs> it, was, it was hilarious. It was like really great That'd comedy, be fun. Because they be... they have this really small stage with no yeah. no backgrounds or anything like that, and they pretty much decided to do this huge epic film as a play version with this minimalistic style. So and it fit it into an hour, like a little Benny Hill music or something. Yeah, yeah. Fit it into an hour. in the Red Sea. Oh, yeah, was, <laughs> oh, yeah, I think when they parted the Red Sea, they did the uh, <laughs> they played the Rocky music when they parted. Oh, the Red sea, nice, I think. nice. That's yeah. an excellent it's good, choice. It's good stuff. Perfect. I actually worked on the sound design. This is why you're a sound designer and I'm it's, not for that because I'd play the Ben Hill music. Yeah. Well, that would have been good too. Yeah, you know, that you know, good so sped up the reel a little bit, when, you know. Every time I think of Benny Hill, you know what I think of when I think of Benny Hill. We don't need to discuss Tits. that. That's what I think of. No, I think of your grandmother. What? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> also, there was a part where. Uh, <laughs> Pull us out, Will. Please. <laughs> there, was, there was a part where Moses uh, gets into a kung fu fight. Oh and it was kung are you fu serious? Fighting. Yeah, and, and uh, at the end of it, just on it, like, they pretty much gave me license to do something. So at the end of yeah. uh, um, the kung fu fight on closing night, I put in the Final Fantasy noise. So at the end of the fight, it's like, nice. and the actor didn't expect it. Like he didn't know what was going to happen. So I yeah. just threw it in. Cause I know on, on closing night, it was pretty much as like, play all the jokes you can. The actors threw in a bunch of improv. Like everybody was screwing with everybody else. And, uh, that's just like part of the play business, I guess. But yeah. it was the first play I ever worked on. But yeah. So at the end of the Kung Fu fight, he's just like lifting his bow staff up or whatever. And I'm just like, Oh, nice. <laughs> and the audience loved it. Oh, they, Lord. Yeah, they went apeshit. So. Was there, cool. so they did other movies there aside from oh, The Ten yeah. Commandments? Oh, as the as a play? Well, they have this thing every year where they do The Twilight Zone. They <gasps> do three different episodes. Wow. And, uh like over like a period of three weeks and okay. uh i also note, worked on that note to anybody with money looking to open something in portland yeah i will and you totally, left san francisco totally why hang again? out at your place yeah. if you do this kind of shit 
Yeah, that's great. Fun. I've actually thought about trying to do some kind of a bad movie night thing here in Portland. Oh, man. Uh, because that, so there wasn't right anything really like that. So. I'm a huge mystery science I theater fan. I would so fan. be just, like trying so hard to be movies. the person in front with the microphone. That's good stuff. Making the bad jokes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's... I mean, And they let anybody in the theater who comes in also scream at the, at the movie as much as you mm-hmm. want. Nice. So, which is one of the things I enjoyed because I would just sit there in the back drinking and be like, Hey, yeah! Ah! Yeah, yeah. Like, Screw you, movie! Blah! Uh, so, I think Frankenstein was one of the best. The the with the one with Robert De Niro. That was. Oh, uh, I never I saw seen that, that one. Yeah, I haven't seen it. I heard it was really bad. I was too scared <sighs> to watch it because I like the Frankenstein tale. There's one part where he's just flapping around with the naked, <laughs> like he's naked and he's flapping around in this big puddle of water with uh, whatever actor I forget who played Doctor Frankenstein, but the huh. Frankenstein monster is Robert yeah. De Niro. So. Wow. It was I had totally a, forgotten they even made that movie. He wasn't Dr. flopping Norwell. around naked with Willy Wonka, was he? Dr. Norwell. Oh, different. To, we okay. need to rent that, that and put it on our list. Really? <laughs> Gene Wilder. No, no. That was I'm a sorry. dream I had one I gotta time. say, There's I don't want to one... see Johnny Depp naked Actually, as Willy Wonka does not do it. No, the me. mashup does is he, Gene Wilder him? as Dr. Frankenstein, right? Oh, Frankenstein. Oh, you're thinking about And the monster finds a Wonka bar, right? You know, and it's all messed up. Frankenstein, yes. And we just, we could just edit that together, right? But Young Frankenstein is not a bad movie. Frankenstein yeah. edited together. Well, I, saw that, yeah. I like that video uh, on YouTube that just been recently been going through the blogosphere. I hate to use that word, but I'm going to blogosphere. Um, they had the Star Trek <laughs> versus Star Wars video. Oh, God. No one yet mm-hmm. with the... Yeah, let's talk uh, about those uh, YouTube videos yeah. you posted on your blog uh, a few days ago. No, no, Which one? I get to ask the important question. The Star Trek Who's videos? your favorite oh, Star those Trek captain? Were awesome. Who's your favorite Star Trek captain? Me? Oh. No, not you. I know oh. who your favorite captain is. I'm going to marry him. Do I have not to know. choose? Yeah. It's, gotta, it's either Picard or Kirk. Okay, you got to pick one. <laughs> yeah. what? That was easy. Shh. Dr. Normal, don't influence the guests. Go right, go right, go Janeway, go Janeway. Oh, no, no, not Janeway. I Thank like you. Janeway. Pick, no Janeway. Pick a captain um, without without looking at Dr. Normal. I have to pick one of, I have to pick you, Picard or Kirk. Yes, I you do. I can decide that. He's going to pick Picard mm. because of those mashups on Damn. YouTube. Yeah. That's, I would, I would. I don't, uh, know. You know, I don't know. You see, I like Kirk. I'm a big William Shatner fan. Mm-hmm, I mm-hmm. think he's hilarious because the thing about him is you don't really know whether he's kidding or not most of the time. No, that's the, the problem. I like to know where someone stands. Yeah, exactly. And with Shatner, I'm always like, are you, you really that insane and self involved? And I think he's kind of in on it. Well, yeah. but you, you listen to his speech patterns. You listen to his speech patterns from back then and from mm-hmm. now, and yeah. it's so much more pronounced now that you have to know that he's. Doing hey, an imitation hey of he himself. was in a classic. Yeah, I think he's he's kind of a parody of himself now, and he knows it. And but that's you know, what's really interesting. You got to give the guy credit. He was in a classic uh, Twilight Zone episode. Ah, uh, the one with the airplane. That's yes. right. So you know, the I mean, he's, imp guy. On the- I mean, I think we're gonna totally like we'll have a totally different take on Kirk when we see the new movie, right? Because it's like I'm so excited. You know, young wispy movie. looking kid. You know, that trailer looks. But interesting. it's not gonna be yeah, the it same. Does. It's not gonna be the same. But I'm really excited. Yeah. But they've got the guy from Heroes. But it does look very yeah, action in your hero trailer. Isn't no? Isn't uh, George Takai in Heroes? Or he was, just, yeah. Because I never watched the show, he but was. I heard I George Takai. Last TV season was really you. good. This season, I'm really unimpressed with. But yes, George Takai was in it. He was one of the main characters' fathers. Mm. Father. That's right. Yeah. Uh, George okay. Takai wishes you all George Takai. A awesome. Merry Christmas. Actually, you do you do a pretty good George Takai. Do I? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. George Takai. George. Uh, no, let me hear your George Takai. I can't do it. Hi, I am George Takai. TV Sulu. Oh, now you know I'm. TV Sulu. Those proton torpedoes. Yeah, I can't. I am George Takai. I can. TV Sulu. Do and I'm very... wishing everyone a happy holidays. Yeah, what's, what's interesting is how he just suddenly kind of emerged as this uh, big media person because he just what did he got he got on well, the like Howard everyone Stern who show? was on that show. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah, and, yeah. I, I, well, no, but he was for years like he wasn't really yeah. doing much. You didn't hear much from him, and then a couple of years ago he like started. Everyone on that show you know, other wasn't than it Shatter? after he came out though. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I think so. It yeah, was. and he, he got on the Howard the Stern show, and then everyone wanted to talk to him. <laughs> isn't he? Isn't <laughs> he a regular fixture on the Howard Stern show now? I don't. I don't know. watch. I don't know. But I've heard that he's he's like one of the regulars on that show. Is he really? He's oh. one of the people who's on there every day, or he used to be, or wow. Yeah, like which the, is interesting. Like Hank the Angry uh, yeah. Dwarf. I met Definitely Hank like once. And oh, really? Then, yeah, Hank has gone now. <laughs> oh. It, I celebrated New Year's 2000 with Didn't Hank. Didn't he get Person of the Year in some old internet mem like in 1998 or something yeah. like that where they voted him like 
was it People Magazine? Something. They had this internet campaign Poor to guy. vote Hank the Angry Drunken Dwarf. Hank, the, Hank the is not with us anymore. Person of the year. Uh, Wait, are you really? I mean, I believe this, that's true. Is this like? Should we have a moment of silence for him? Is this yeah. like dead or alive, or is he it really could dead? Be. But Hank, Hank came up to Portland to celebrate do, New Year's two thousand. Do, 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 do. So, so uh, tell us about. We miss you, Hank. Karaoke. If I knew who you oh, were, Hank. You want to talk about I, karaoke? No, right. we do because I have to talk to you. Do you want to open that box? This is really serious. <laughs> we do. People on Twitter have seriously been wanting to um, arrange a Twitter karaoke. I've been hearing that. Verso is doing that, right? She's, she was the one who Many was people are discussing it. Would you and tweet now, the song Now we're discussing I don't know. waiting until after January. Because of the smoke. The smoke free. A lot of people so, complain about the smoke at jobs. What I'm saying. thinking is what we need to do is arrange twitter on a night that Will Raddick is working. That and you so. go and, and go do twitter while Will Raddick is Twitter Wait, karaoke, karaoke DJ. What do you call tweeple. karaoke DJ? KJ. 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 Really? So while he's KJing, uh, we, the people it. of Twitter, really? mm. need to go and Sounds. be there. Well, karaoke DJ Goofy. is kind of unwieldy. So. It is. It's hard to say. And KJ is, but then again, KJ, like, I can't just walk up to somebody on the street and they're like, what do you do? I'm a KJ. Well, I'm a KJ. They don't, they don't exactly. know what the fuck that means. So. But I know now. It almost sounds dirty. Yeah. It actually so, sounds like, really? Does it? KJ? Yeah. KJ. So this is new, KJ. This is new. like, in the last yeah. month or so, right? I've been working there for a month and a half almost. Mm -hmm. Well, no, no, actually almost a month. Yeah, well, uh, you see, I was training for a month before I started working, so. Because you have to train to be a karaoke DJ? Oh, yeah. There's, I mean, it's a lot of juggling. (laughs) What is that schooling? Six months of training. It's like that Yoda thing in Star Wars 2, Pretty much I was just taking over uh, the shift for people who were actually working. They would kind of like shadow me and, Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, a lot of it's... uh, You don't have to lift rocks with your mind or anything? No, no, there's a... Yeah, I was running around with my backpack and I see a picture of my father. Exactly. Dude. No, um, dude, you know, it's tough. I was trying to lift my X-Wing up and then it was like... Exactly. Okay, so seriously. So, um... Yeah. You... Basically, like I had a, you know, I knew how to work the soundboard already. They have yeah. a nice professional soundboard there, and I knew how to work that because of my college courses that I took and all this other stuff that I did. So uh, that wasn't a big deal. But then the, the the biggest part is juggling the rotation because mm-hmm. you have all these slips, and it's a very crowded place a lot of the time. And w- people will come up and yell at you if they don't get to sing. Like they will get angry. So, so where are you at KJ? Uh, chopsticks to oh, with chopsticks on Burnside, yeah. Wow. Okay. And what is the least busy night of the week? I, that's a good question. You know, it varies because I've had I've been working there. I work there on Thursday nights, and mm-hmm. I've had some wildly different nights. Like the first night I worked there, it was pretty busy. The next night it was as busy as a weekend, and then the next night it was like eh, not that much. So it pretty much jumps up and down. You can't really say that any other any night is busy, busier than any other because there are a lot of regulars that come in on uh-huh. certain days. And they'll just come in that night of the week because they have their favorite KJ or yeah. whatever. So it's, it's weird. I have some. It's a weird culture. Some, There's a whole culture around. I have more KJ. T- I have some KJ Star Wars mashup KJ music to play in the background okay. as yeah. you're talking just, about this. Okay, you go ahead. Yeah. Right. So Tweeple, if we want to go, and I think this is. I think I've been to Chopsticks on Burnside. Don't you guys have like a? That's a nice place. A Chopsticks. Did you have a karaoke? Um, What's oh, the competition? MC Chris. Yeah. MC Chris. <laughs> Fets vet. So don't you guys have a, like a karaoke contest, like a king of the karaoke thing? I think that there was something like that. I don't know exactly when that is or if it's uh, an institutionalized thing. I know that they had a contest, but that was with the KJs. Uh-huh. And it was before I started working there. And it was against, I think it was Boiler Room. It was another karaoke place, and mm. they had all the KJs from both places come up and have a contest where they would have a they were judged in, on their singing. So years ago, it, it was shortly before I started dating Doctor Normal. One of my friend's boyfriend. You dated me. Do we really need to discuss the? Specifics? I was going to make a bag. No. That was the polite way. A little bit of, of the of history it. of the chaos. That was the and polite way. That's the polite way of singing it. Before I had sex with Doctor Normal, and then decided to keep him. Yeah. One of my much friends you have was, the sex, and then it's like, hey, we yeah. should go out, right? Was dating. That's what I One do. of my I mean, friends exactly. was dating. Come on, it's 21st century. Let me You've tell the careful. story. Exactly. Let me tell the story. Doctor Normal, I'm going to put you in time out. You know I can do it. Ooh. One of my friends was dating a guy who was heavy into karaoke, mm-hmm. and he competed in the competition. Mm-hmm. I think he took third place. All yeah. right. 
Well, that's nice. You know the guy with the hair that had to stick his finger in every hair product before he would use it? I was hoping you would say something that was Yeah, right. exactly. I'm this trying not to say totally his name. Wrong. I'm trying, you know who I'm talking about. Let's listen to MC Chris, listen right? To MC Chris. <laughs> My backpack's got jet. Exactly. I'm Booba the, the Fett. I, I found him for Jabba, Jabba, Jabba Hutt to finance my vet. This actually would be a good space. karaoke song. Yeah, you know, you know? That, that's one of those obscure things that you kind of wish that they would make a karaoke yeah, song out of. Yeah, that would be perfect. So what kind of, perfect. So, oh, wait. So, Twitteroki people, if we want to do Twitteroki on a night that we have a KJ that we know Thursday night at Chopsticks. And no Depeche Mode. I just made that rule. Why can't we have Depeche yeah, Mode? Dep- I don't know. No What's Depeche Mode. wrong with you, Dr. Normal? I just made this. They only have two Depeche Mode songs, I think, where there I work. What which are is, they? They have a very sadly limited selection. I think they have, um, what is it, uh, Personal Jesus and... Uh, oh, God. Yeah, yes. the really common like, ones. The last thing Jesus. you want to do is walk into a bar and hear uh, someone sing Personal so Jesus. Do they have, it's just like, do like, they have Peggy Lee? At least it's not Jeremy. Yeah. People are doing that constantly. Do you guys oh, have any Peggy oh Lee? the... Uh, um, I think so. Sarah Vaughn? Hold Probably. So what I need to find out is if you Hold guys have whatever Lola wants. <laughs> yes. You hear that every night, pre-plan. don't you? Almost I need every to pre-plan night. my karaoke music. Okay. I need you to find out if you guys have whatever Lola wants. Oh, we do. I just <gasps> played it for somebody last night. Yes. No shit. Mm-hmm. I'm so excited. Yep. If anybody else tries to fucking sing that song at Twitter Okie <laughs> Night, I will fucking shank you. Is well, that that's a That's a warning right now for you. Yeah, exactly. Shiv, shiv. I will shiv you. I think shank is a... <laughs> shank or shiv. Isn't it? Yeah, what is the difference between a shiv and a shank? Is I it think... Let's Google thing? that out there, Isn't folks. it a lamb shank? Lamb shank? Isn't it a part of the lamb? That's true. You'll shiv them with, with a lamb, lamb shank. shank. It's like a metal object that you, you shank someone I, with. That's, what, that's how I was using it. No, she's going to take a lamb shank. shank and shiv them. I will wear my four and a half inch difference? heels that I wore at Ignite Portland. I and I will it. shove that heel up a part of your body you do not want it shoved Cle- in. Clearly it's going to make your K-Jang more interesting, right? Maybe the shiv is the thing that you shank someone with. Exactly. Is that what it no, is? No, I think to shiv is... Is a noun and a verb. I think is a shiv really? is a noun because it's the shiv. It sounds like a dance, create. like do the shiv. And a noun, it's a verb with because you shiv someone do, 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 do. with it. Do the shiv with the shank. Hey, could somebody with a Move with forward. access to the computer Go look ahead. up shank? Is it just a lamb shank? That's the shank? other karaoke song. You probably hear that every hey, night. What's that? Devo. Uh, whip it, whip it. Dun, dun, no, dun, 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 dun. people don't do that. Surprisingly, <gasps> Dr. Love Normal. Shack they do a lot. Oh, God. yeah, Love Shack. Shack is, is, that, that, they've been doing that for twenty. Hey, Dr. Years. Normal, what are you going to sing at Twitter? That song. The oh God! Summer love. You're the one that I want. No, the summer no. love one. Oh. They do that all the time, and I'm just like every time it comes on, I'm like, it's like it's like free bird on the jukebox. Do you, do you, you make your yourself. reactions public, or do you just like, no for the most part? Cool? Well, but on Twitter, Roki night, will it's you? It's difficult not to sometimes because yeah. we have bright lights shining on us behind the booth, so we so excited. people can pretty bright lights, big city. Well, yeah. yeah. Doctor Normal, <laughs> what will you, said that. Street hey, light people. Exactly. What will you sing for Twitter Oki Night? <laughs> Actually, there is an old Robert Palmer song that if they ever could get that loaded in the karaoke, I would do it. It's an old one. Do you know what song it's um, called? It's called. Um, I don't know if we have it. Um, I, it's I it's one of those old crazy. They have a huge catalog, so I don't have it memorized. There's late seventies. Nice but you definitely have whatever um, Lola wants. Yes, absolutely. It's called Can We Still, still Be Best Friends? Song ever. Oh my God, I know that song. That's right. It's a great tune. It's a great old 70s, like before Robert Palmer did Addicted to Love and all we that stuff. We might have it. Like, you know what's, what's kind of interesting is the other day. Can um, we still be friends? Once I started working at the, uh, I wanted to practice all these songs that I, because I, I end up having to sing a lot. Because if there's nobody there in the beginning. Are you I have, serious? I really? Actually, it's part of my job. I have to go up and sing until wow. the rotation is full. No, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're qualified That's to be fantastic. KJ because you went to college and you learned sound design. And you well, know no, something, and you're willing to make an yeah. ass of yourself in front of people. Now, what, oh, what's, yeah, what's, the, what's your training on the whole? I mean, that's what I'm doing right now, like pretty much. Yeah. Make okay. An ass of myself. So you just like, you just go for it. Yeah, and you know, well, I, I like to practice songs before I sing. Do them. you sing the Journey song? That's but what I there have been some that I don't know. I would never touch that song just because it's somebody else is going to sing it anyway. Yeah, exactly. Really badly too. There's something in your mug. Yeah. Okay. It looks like it's. It looks like Maribu. Maribu. Whatever. Yeah. We haven't determined. You lost some of your there's suit some, into your there's mug. Some I was, no, was going to say, careful, Clarence Thomas. <laughs> it's oh, it's fluff. this stuff. It's from the Christmas tree. This I'll stuff live, does but, come off. Yeah. Like, it comes off of this, too. I got this as scrap, which is another place that I volunteer. Oh, yeah. Oh, scrap. 
Yeah, that's a fun place. Mm. So that's like a, yeah, so tell us about so Scrap. So Scrap is the reason that Verso said that I said you were a yarn geek, because she uh, was discussing yarn knitting, mm. knitting lessons, and you said something about Scrap, and then it led to yarn, uh, and that you'd yeah. be willing to go to a yarn tweet up. Yeah, she, she, I would be willing to go, but I know nothing about knitting. Yeah, I have so. upstairs a crochet hook and some yarn. And, and Someone it, try to teach me to crochet. And a hollow so. promise that Verso will teach me how to do something with that. <laughs> I, Crocheting is kind of weird because you have like the little hook and knitting you have these needles. I don't know. I, yeah, well, I, I she told me I needed to, to learn how to crochet first because the one hook is easier than the two needles. Apparently. I Apparently. see people do it all the time. Like, oh, if you go to Cube Space. I've never been there. Is it, is it a nice place? It's a well, you come into Cyborg Camp, right? Oh, yeah, you'll yes. see it for Cyborg Camp. So you will be there yeah. uh, next um, Saturday. Either Rabbi David or Eva. Oh, someone's always right. knitting. 9 a.m., I believe. 9 or 10 a.m. Uh, well, we'll, we'll Go to Cyborg Camp. Cyborg. If you haven't Cyborg. already registered for yeah. Cyborg Camp, register now because it's going to go up on yeah. Tuesday. Actually, we yeah, that's, that's the plug we need to do. Cyborg Camp. You need to go. And then there's a party on Friday night. There's a party, night. and I think it's going to start at 9 o'clock at Vidoop. Vidoop. We'll and and yeah. we're going to be Don't broadcasting. Well, no, it really is starting at Vidoop. Vidoop. It, we're really going to broadcast at we're some We're not going to start talking until way after 9. Um, yeah. But it, it's going to be at Vidoop, and Strange Love Live will be live and on location next week. Awesome. At Vidoop. So we can. Are you going to have a mic hooked up where people can just stop in and have, for, be on the show? We're going to have a guest, and we're going to we're going to pull people in to awesome. to be on. Yes, we're going to pull audience member. Well, not even audience, party guests uh-huh. up to be on the show. So yes, awesome. it's going to be a a free for all. Of Sounds cool. Yes, with some structure. With some structure, because Doctor like Normal Einstein Einstein build an empire. Um, that's right. Um, yeah. So cyborgcamp.com or org. Try one of those, and there's a registration. You've got to register. Yeah. If it's not right, if you then don't just register, go to the Strange Love Live site, and on the side, there's a little link to it. Or you, you could Google it. Or you can Google it, yeah. Or you could go to Twitter and find out, mm-hmm. because I'm sure someone there will tell you. Yes. You could follow Cyborg Camp on Twitter. Yes. Dr. Normal is pushing more buttons. Yeah, I'm always pushing buttons. So what else? Uh, so the, the holiday season and scrap. And, and the cherubs. Oh, scrap! Yeah, I, I'm I want. Can we turn off all the lights? To see? And make see if they glow yet. Doctor Normal. Can we'll we turn we'll off do that the at lights? the end. We'll do a big fade okay. or something. Oh, do I have more buttery rum? No. Do you want some? I can pour some of mine in yours. Oh no, that's okay. I, I, mean, just like, I really shouldn't finish this, or then oh. it will be very incoherent. Oh yeah. So I so we did that. I so, that. So we mentioned. Um, we mentioned Cyborg Camp. Cyborg so we camp. should mention what you're going to bring to Cyborg yes. Camp. Yes. Uh, and uh, this is this is something I'm kind of uh, I've never really done any public speaking, but apparently I'm just gonna do a kind of a demo. You oh, should yeah, bluff. You got your, yeah, you, you got should your, bluff your way. That through would it. that would scare the hell out of me. What you just did, by the way, with the IP4 thing, that would. You know, I, I told would not somebody be able the to do first that. twenty seconds. I was like, oh shit, and then the rest of it, I was like, oh look, people, hi. Yeah, and you <laughs> just you seem to be really good at projecting the confidence. Even if you're nervous. I thought you know, she must be nervous, but she's not showing it. Thank so, you. That was good. You did a good job at that. So, yeah, the um, the cyborg camp. It wasn't her. She was a replicant. <laughs> I don't know why I threw that out there. I'm <laughs> you married cyborg a, You married a replicant. That's <laughs> hot. Replicants that hot? do naughty things in bed. Hey, that means your marriage lasts for four years. Sean Young was, or well, it depends <laughs> on your take on uh, Blade Runner, but Sean Young was probably, well, Sean, she was a replicant for she sure. She was a yeah. replicant. Oh, yeah, it was whether or not Harrison spoiler. Ford. Deckard, yeah. It was whether or not Harrison Ford was Epic a replicant. Epic spoiler. Right, okay. Thank you. Thanks for the show. Oh, my God. If you oh, haven't seen it. Like, if you seen haven't it, seen Blade Runner and you're watching Strange Love Live, you know. You know <laughs> I'm not sure I can talk to you in social circles if go, you haven't exactly. seen Blade Runner. Go back to school, son. <laughs> Bad times, baby. Yeah, and, you know. Tell me, come back and tell me about the tour ships. Uh, off you know, the and to be fair, you there totally gave the away the, the usual suspect line. spoiler. You're the one that threw the usual suspect spoiler. The attack ships on fire. Yeah. So you have no room to talk spoiler wise. A Tannhauser Gate. Yes, <laughs> I've seen things you people wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> attack ships on fire off the shoulder of Orion. I think for the next 15 minutes, we're just going to do uh, lines from a Blade Runner, right? <laughs> yeah. All of these moments will vanish, or exactly. whatever. Like tears in rain. <laughs> Time to die. Wow. Okay. Well, hey, nice work. I've got a really nice fun work. one from Blade Runner. Home again, home again, jiggity jig. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
Dude, it's I want to live. It's creepy as it is. You should have mentioned Blade Runner. That's, yeah. Oh, it's a good great news. cult. You know, I saw it in the theater. Did they redo it? Released. Did they, yeah. So I saw it last year. Is it here, on DVD? Here in Portland. Is it on DVD? It. Um, I'm sure it is. I don't know if it's. Out I've been yet, waiting but, for the re-release. But on I DVD. saw it. In the, well, seeing it in the theater was an amazing experience, and yeah. I was up here visiting uh, last year before I had moved here for like a, a month and a half. Mm-hmm. I think I saw it at. Um, I want to say I saw it at Laurelhurst, but I'm not entirely sure. You yeah, know, I think they were playing it. It yeah. was awesome. Yeah, yeah. I just I even went by myself. Like none of my roommates were like they were just like oh well I don't know. And at the time there I was just visiting them. They weren't my roommates, but I was like hey come come see Blade Runner. They're like. Eh. No. Wow! So I just went by That's myself. Same. I just I really wanted to see it, and uh, it Looked was great. Huh? Well worth it. Yeah, I mean, even if it was the older version, just to see it in the theater. Yeah, yeah. I've never seen it. On it looks terrible on DVD. I have to ask, at least the released version I have to ask, on DVD. Because we we ask this quite commonly. Top three movies. Your favorite three movies. That's a tough question. That's why we give you three because mm. the, the favorite movie is never That's right. possible. Okay, I'm gonna do the first stuff that comes in my head. I would say like uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show. Nice. Hedwig Very nice. And Barbarella. But Hedwig, Barbarella, Hedwig, wow. Hedwig, and Rocky wow. Horror. Yeah, but I also like uh, Coen Brothers a lot. Oh, we yeah. love them. What's, What's your favorite? Stuff. What's your favorite Coen Brothers movie? That's tough to say. Be I mean, careful. There's, there's a lot of really. I'm good looking ones. at you. There's a lot of really good ones. Yeah. I like you know I like all of them pretty much. Yeah. But you know my favorites. I, I could I could give you a little list of my favorites. Okay, Please so I do. like. Um, you know, Raising Arizona, of course. Mm-hmm. I uh, love Raising Arizona. Big Lebowski, mm-hmm. which is probably one of the greatest movies ever made. Keep going. And uh, You're Miller's skipping. Crossing. Oh, there you go. He feels better now. Ding, 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 ding. Miller's you Crossing get the is amazing to me because I don't really like gangster films. But oh, I really? I love Miller's really? Crossing because really? I think that most gangster films like, uh, um, like Goodfellas, for example, or yeah. you know any other Godfather's. gangster film, any other gangster yeah. film, they tend to focus on the kind of like grotesquery and right. the right. kind of really fucked up things that these people do. Right. But Miller's Crossing is different because it kind of focuses on the politics. Exactly. And exactly. There and it's really more cerebral. And I, I find it's that one, really one of my favorite movies of all time. Yeah, it's actually Crossing in my is, top five. Great, Miller's Crossing is in my. Great. It's hard to say what your number one is, but if you take your top five. Miller's Crossing is in my top five of all time. So how do you feel movie. about the older film. movies like The Maltese Falcon? I ha- I've not seen a lot of the film noir stuff. That's Ooh. film noir, right? Yeah. Yeah, you gotta... Yeah, yeah. I've, I've... You'll get there. Have you seen I've, Casablanca? I have not. You'll get there. Yeah. But I have Bye. seen, like, uh, here. for example, like Battleship Potemkin, which is, you know, you an go. old Soviet film. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. yeah. Uh, you, I have homework it's, for it's you. Your, your, your homework is to yeah. watch not only Casablanca, but Maltese Falcon. Maltese mm. Falcon being very important. And what's that other movie I really love? Oh, Notorious. Then. Notorious. Al- Alfred Hitchcock. Mm. Yes. Watch some good old Hitchcock. Yeah, I have not seen a lot of Hitchcock, but I know it's supposed to be good. Like, mm-hmm. uh, um, what's that one with the plane? That's uh, North by Northwest. North by Northwest. Yes, yes, I, I want to see also, that. Also, Vertigo. What's the one with the? I've box? seen Birds, and I've seen. You know the one I'm talking about with the trunk. Oh, uh, uh, Rope. Rope. I watched. I watched a lot of his TV show at Nick on Nick at Night when I was a kid too. You need to. You need to watch Rope. Rope okay. is an. Well, there's a, there's movie. a whole. I, I I think that's actually our our homework for 2009, right? Our New Year's resolution among the Tweeples is to actually mm-hmm. go, and we should all just do film geekery. Dude, that would maybe, be awesome. Maybe we should I would have, love to do that. I would bring a, some cool Jean Luc Godard films. You know, for the, the bad movie night. It'd be thing. great, and the bad movie night. In, we should have a yeah. bad movie night, but we should also have a film noir night. Yeah, that would be awesome too. I would, and French I would New happily, Wave, man. Would you gotta have the, <gasps> like Godard. Yeah, man. Maybe, I love. Maybe those we movies. should have a film noir night for my birthday. There you go. I like that stuff, but I tried to watch. Oh, what a, what a masculine! Thing. Yeah, masculine. That's one of my favorite That's movies. It, yeah, he loves I, that. I, it's a really good movie, but I would have to watch it in it's segments tough. because the you first time I watched it, I just sat there and I almost problem. fell asleep. I was like, "Yeah, yeah. it's attention yeah. span." But I tried really hard. I did actually watch yeah. the whole thing, but the whole I, I was mm. struggling. I no, was it's like, tough. You have the same attention span that I do. Yeah. Where you're like, I know this is a good movie, but I can't watch it. Because yeah. yeah, I don't. I don't know why I like. It's a those good movies. Movie, I don't know because it's just it's kind of almost like a documentary. And you're I would just say like, it's amazing that we can watch a movie for seventeen hours in which nothing actually happens. See, so I'll well, give an example of my attention span is like I keep focusing on this piece of popcorn which nobody can yeah. see. Right, but there's one piece on of popcorn floor, on the floor, and I, I just it's keep looking tentacles. down there and it's just like it's, huge, it's moving, yeah, field with a popcorn. In it. Exactly, I'm looking, man. Yeah. it's not just you. Have you ever seen the uh, Gummo? Yes. I love the little kid with the rabbit ears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
It's awesome. Yeah, yeah but that, that movie That's great. a messed up filmmaking. What did you think Actually, Johnny Cram has my that movie. I forget who Harmony did Harmony Corinne. Okay. And that's uh, that's basically like the, the premise of that movie is kind of like showing this really screwed up white mm-hmm. trash town. Oh, yeah. yeah. You think? Well, the, the, part, <laughs> the part when they show the people throwing the chairs on mm-hmm. the, and getting drunk. and just like, like the chair party. wrestling <laughs> in the living room. Where the guy yeah. beat. Or destroys the chair in the yeah, yeah. yeah. and everybody's like woo or the or the the mother is like giving her kid a bath and she's washing the silverware in it <laughs> uh-huh. all at the same time yeah that's a that's a great film <laughs> hey cram if you're out there give me my movie back man i'm jones and for hey yo cram you stole uh gummo from I, this guy you know i gave it to him i i said you got to see this movie man uh, it's gonna mess you up did you ever watch donnie darko uh yes now i have mixed feelings about donnie darko I mean, I'm interested to hear that. Thing about Donnie Darko is, when I first saw it, I didn't really like it mm-hmm. because, and and my girlfriend at the time, I dated this girl for like three years, and she was really into it, and I wasn't, so it was like it almost became one of those big points of your relationship that you um, argue about. Like I was just like, screw you, Donnie Darko sucks, and well, you know, I've heard you play it a million mm-hmm. times, and uh, I was getting so sick of it. And, you know, but I love, like, Tears for Fears, for example. So, Uh I mean, I enjoyed that aspect of it. But it was, uh, yeah, I I thought that a lot of the movie was was very, like, teenage rebellious kind of stuff. It was just like, oh, mom, dad, I hate you and this lifestyle and blah, blah, blah. And I think that... It was something that kind of was been has been done before, but then they yeah. had this whole other plot element going on. So I don't know. I wanted to hate it. I wanted to hate it so much. Uh, maybe I'll really watch it again. And I'll it, like and I it. I don't it. know. I don't know. But then there's God. There's this other movie. Oh, what was it called? With the Zach Braff movie, honey. What was it? Um, uh, Garden State. I wanted to oh, love yeah, Garden no, State, no. and I thought it was a piece of shit. You know, I liked it a lot the first time that I saw it. Mm-hmm. And the second time that I saw it, I said, no, this is just kind of contrived. Like, exactly, it's stuff. completely contrived. Same way I felt about Juno. I haven't seen Juno. Juno. Because I'm afraid that I'm going to watch it and be like, oh, that's a piece of shit. My favorite uh, review, uh, almost one of my favorite film reviews ever, was a review of Juno, mm-hmm. where they had pretty much the exact same sentiments I felt when they watched it, which is like, it's. they said it's like having white hot indie poured into your eyes. It's like <laughs> it's like everything about that film, they just tried to make it as indie as they possibly could. And it's I hate almost, that. It's very, I just want you, like, you know, oh. I want people to make a movie and sincerely make a movie. Yeah. And not be like, I don't, I don't want to be marketed to. Yeah, they're very much like just, they were trying to tap into that hole. And it's not really an indie movie, whether it's technically an indie movie or not. I mean, they had a huge star power. Yeah. I mean, they had one guy from Arrested Development in the movie. They had one guy from uh, The Office in the movie. Uh, actually, they had two guys that were in Arrested Development, but one, he was like kind of like a guest star uh, yeah. for a few episodes. So yeah, it was it was just... Uh, Oh no! They had three people from Arrested Development in the movie. Who was yeah. it? Who the w- kid? The kid the who was kid. the father. I knew that. He was in Arrested Development, and the uh, the guy who plays one of the people who's going to adopt the the baby is uh, the main character, Michael. Uh, Michael Bluth. Bluth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was in the movie too. So I like him, Jason. Jason. He's, Bateman? he's cool, Jason Bateman. Yeah, yeah he's Justin he's cool. Bateman's brother. Yeah, but uh, it was just it was just too much indie. Near. And plus, the the way that they talk is very contrived, and uh, I, they are all very, very witty. I like people and, to speak in movies. I want you people to seen talk it, the so way you they should talk. At least watch I, it I'm going to watch so you it. Can I just really that. like people. I think that's the oh. thing in Garden State is that they didn't speak like people speak. Mm-hmm. I write, and I write very differently than uh-huh. I speak. Yeah, Speaking you, of Garden State, fine sandwiches up there on 13th. Ooh, are we and, advertising uh, for the food cart? Because I really like their little risotto balls. Those are, risotto okay. balls for the win so do we do we have more music that we need to play we actually do we actually have music to i think to the, play the last out, music we play is going to play us out that's but right. we're getting close to the play us out that's right oh, it, portion of the evening time? especially when we defaulted into talking about movies <laughs> i can't help it oh i can yeah i can when talk about movies talk for hours no that's about okay movies, yeah. that's okay I'm happy. it just happens you have been kind of quiet for a while you know well you know he was in the chat room there's just so many there seems to be so many podcasts that talk about movies and tv right I'm gonna give Will a Strange Love Life button. Oh, oh excellent, sweet. man! Yeah, I think it's the first one we've given out on the air. So, um, other than Cyborg Camp coming up next week, yeah. where you're going to don't bring the theremin poke yourself. and have a great time. <laughs> no. um, anything else uh, interesting in coming the up in the, in the 
you got the karaoke. Yeah, and uh, that's you the cyborg camp with the theremin, which is exciting. I'm we're totally excited simultaneously about looking forward to and terrified of that at the same that's time. Okay. That's okay. And uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much what's going on. Um, I'm still trying to get. Uh, show together for my photography and my art stuff oh that would be great i've, I've had a few offers to do a show i just haven't like cool. gotten a cohesive body of work if you're together. if you're up on yeah. facebook and you friend will you can check out some of his other than the party photos old stuff that are up and, there but yes yes some can, of his photos you can, not check, photos out, you can check out my him. mohawk yeah yeah Shh. but you can check out some Fancy of the pants. the photography some interesting like things with dolls and oh yeah stuff like oh that. you know you know what's funny uh that that animal was running around my house today. It mm-hmm. actually chewed the head off of one of my dolls. <laughs> it really. And I was like, "This oh is God, an I'm evil. So this is you. an evil oh beast." It God. chewed the head off of this little creepy doll that I had that I got at scrap, and I was really happy about it. And it's just like <laughs> it chewed the head off. It was. Uh, I don't like little. Oh, I should point out that yeah. when we moved into the house, there were rodents, and that's the reason we yeah. got a cat. Yeah, there, there's. Oh yeah, there's, we have a cat. You guys have a cat. Oh, and she's it's not been hunt. She's, she was an old farmhouse cat. She's actually been hunting it. She was chasing it around the house today. Yeah. We were watching. Good her. job, Princess so, Tina. Yeah, you she's go, a good Princess kid. Tina. Yeah. I remembered her name. Aw. I mean, <sighs> Princess Tina. Well, I, I know it violates this. some. Last week, I completely forgot. Portland some City of these Council names. law, but <laughs> it's called poison. poison. It's called poison. poison. That thing will be gone. Yeah. I know. Well, you know, it's not very Portland. It's not really. It's not really the. It's not really like a rat or anything. It's not like it's kind of like made a home in the house. I think it's more just like it's an outside <laughs> creature, like a squirrel or a and it's chipmunk, and it's just trapped and trying to See, get out. And the cat is just stalking the around I the house. I just All I can think is like, I'm curled up in my bed, going to sleep with my pillow, and I'm watching <laughs> And that fucking rodent can be in oh, my room. Oh, yeah, there. that's, that's going to scare me. I'm <laughs> probably going to sleep on the couch tonight. Yeah. I, I, I just, I, I just, oh. gosh. Or like it could crawl up your pant leg, or because it, it knocks. Oh, it like knocks. in the cartoons. Oh, like, Jesus I, Christ! I, I have that like that like I was saying with dolls. Like I have this mantle. I ha- we have the mantle by our fireplace, and I mm-hmm. I had it covered with like these creepy dolls and just I other want weird all stuff. The this mannequin head, and I have think about this. And it just went up <laughs> there, Christmas. and it knocked everything off. Like it knocked the mannequin head off, and it flew like three or four mannequin feet because I found it on the floor. Almost like, the scariest creepy creature. It sounds like a it squirrel just, or chipmunk, actually. It, they're usually that fast; they do crazy. Can yeah, you just it must leave be a the doors open? It had a little like, tiny tail. Oh. I have. I'm gonna put the video on YouTube because I actually did right. record a video with part of it jumping out from behind the computer monitor. But it's like so quick. You can't really is tell it like what a it little is. brown blur or a little gray blur? It's or little a little brownish white? gray. And it's got this little, it's not a bushy tail, but it does have a little tail. And I don't know, I, it looks almost like it's a little mole or something. <laughs> it's not like Mr. Hanky or something trying to get in for the holidays. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not a kid, I'm Mr. Hanky. No. And the cat's just going to kill Mr. Hanky. That would be a, that would ruin Christmas. Exactly. <laughs> well, yeah. Sorry. South Park. And those animals trying to take away Christmas from us. So, I don't know. Hopefully Princess Tina will save Christmas. Yeah, exactly. So Princess Tina. Yeah. Or, or uh, you know, more humanely, hopefully the little animal will get out through the doors 